Everything was going great for the Singapore Flyer. It had been approved for construction despite being criticised for lacking originality. It looks similar to the London Eye in early designs. Something that they evidently did not care for. And even when things looked bleak, as developers struggled to acquire funds for the Flyer's construction, two German banks stepped in and threw $240 million at them, and it was built. It couldn't be better. It was the world's tallest observation wheel and 165 meters. The tickets for its first rides, which were for corporate bigwigs, sold for $8,888 during Chinese New Year. The first public rides were on Valentine's Day, and Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong graced its official opening. Everyone was optimistic. And then... The flyer stopped mid-ride due to a minor fault in the braking system in July 2008. Just a minor hiccup, nothing much. But then on 23rd December of the same year, 173 passengers were trapped on the wheel for 6 hours due to a short circuit and a fire in the flyer's control room. Passengers were evacuated, some were hospitalised, and the flyer was closed indefinitely. An investigation of the malfunction was launched and $3 million was spent on additional backup systems that they should have probably invested in earlier like anti-fire and smoke systems. There were also other breakdowns on the 4th of December in 2008 where it stopped for 5 hours due to bad weather. The 18th of July 2010, an electrical cable was struck by lightning. And 20th June in 2013, operations were suspended due to the haze. There was even a scandal in March 2010 involving one of Singapore Flyer's consultants, but apparently the Flyer had nothing to do with it. These breakdowns didn't help as the Flyer began to make less and less. Despite initial success, the Flyer's profits began to dwindle. The factors working against the Flyer were plentiful. First, it failed with locals. The view from the top of the Flyer is nice, but it doesn't make anyone want to come back for a second time round, especially considering the hefty price of $33. In fact, there are many tall buildings in Singapore from which you can get a bird's eye view of the city. The appeal to locals isn't really there. So tourists are the flyer's main source of income, but it failed with tourists too. Location-wise, it was not convenient. The closest MRT station at the time was the Esplanade station, and the walk from there was long and tiring and hot. It was also not near any other attractions at the time. Also, the wheel offers tourists a chance to feast on local cuisine, but there are better and cheaper places to do that. The observation wheel was meant to compete with the London Eye, but the latter had what the former lacked. The London Eye is iconic, just as the Eiffel Tower is for Paris and the Statue of Liberty is for New York. The Singapore Flyer is unable to stand out as a unique landmark for Singapore like the London Eye is able to do. Also, in all honesty, the view is nothing spectacular. All there is to see is just building after building and a bunch of roads. So it's pretty boring. So with the wheel starting to look like a flop and dwindling profit since 2010, the Singapore Flyer's owner, Singapore Flyer Private Limited, filed for bankruptcy and the Flyer was placed under receivership in 2013. Accounting firm Ferrier Hogson was the receiver. At one point, a British firm, Merlin Entertainments, entered talks to take ownership of the Flyer. It sounded perfect. They were responsible for the London Eye. I mean, who better to revitalize the failed Flyer than the firm who managed to keep the Flyer's competitor afloat in such a big success after so many years. It was almost too good to be true. And it was. The firm later abandoned talks to acquire the wheel due to a breakdown in talks with the receiver. Finally, in August 2014, Straco Leisure Private Limited bought the Flyer. It's a tourism company that has run successful tourist attractions in China like the Shanghai Ocean Aquarium. So far, the Singapore Flyer hasn't closed down and has somewhat improved financially speaking, so they must be doing something right. But still, many doubt its long-term survivability. The direction of the Flyer's rotation was reversed in August 2008. The Flyer used to rotate from land to sea with high-rise buildings in view for the ascent and the sea in view for the descent. It made sense. The upward movement is reserved for the side with something to actually look at, while the downward movement is reserved for the side with a plain but peaceful sea. But they reverse the rotation so that it goes from sea to land. So on the ascent, all you see is the plain sea, and on the descent, all you see are buildings, which was kind of the only point of going up there. All because some feng shui masters claim going from land to sea is bad luck because it symbolizes the riches of the city being thrown into the sea and that rotation in the opposite direction would bring about prosperity. Well, so much for that. 